Hi, my name is Amy Copeland, and you're watching Amputee Cookbook. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make my roasted spaghetti squash. I love roasted spaghetti squash, and especially for today's low-carb diets, it can be a great way to substitute noodles in pasta and also just to get extra nutrients from vegetables. Um, I love it with everything. Any kind of sauce you can put right on top of a roasted spaghetti squash or just eat it plain with salt and pepper. So I'm going to show you how to do it. First, we have a little spaghetti squash. I like to use a pretty small spaghetti squash. I usually get the smallest one that they have and you're going to understand why when I go to try to cut it in a little bit. But first, we just want to poke holes in this baby. So I'm going to grab just a small paring knife out of my very disorganized drawer. And I'm going to come over to the cutting board and we're just going to pierce it a few times. Now, if you're at home and you're really strong and or you have a very good knife, you can just go ahead and skip this step. I'm going to pierce it and I'm going to microwave it for about five minutes just to soften the flesh. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it would be just impossible for me to cut it without doing so. So I've got a little paring knife here. So I'm just going to kind of stab it, try to stabilize it and stab it. I'm just going to do this maybe four or five times just around the center of the spaghetti squash so that when I microwave it, it does not explode on me. I'm just going to scrape this little sticker off. This is an organic spaghetti squash. Pierce it one more time and then it's going to go in the microwave and again if you're averse to microwaves you can just get a really strong knife and just cut it raw. So I'm going to take this, it's been pierced a few times, stick it in the microwave. While you're in this process, you may also want to go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees, which I've already done right here. So that way it can be right. And you can also go ahead and get your pan out. Now I'm just going to use a small metal baking dish. Actually, I'm going to use my glass one right here. Sometimes it doesn't fit great in this one, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, and now we wait for another four minutes. All right, so that has finished. It is popping its juices out of those little holes that I made in it as you can see so hopefully now it'll be a little easier to cut as i mentioned microwaving it just helps soften the flesh a little bit and you know i've got this um tool that i use here on my cutting board which makes it a little hard for me to cut a spaghetti squash to be honest you're gonna see in just a moment but it is possible anything is possible if you want it bad enough and i really like spaghetti squash so we make it happen. All right, so I've got to do this kind of in a couple of motions. So I get my knife 
here set up. And it is a challenge to get it started. Let's get this all situated. So as you can see, because my knife is pivoted, it is just a little challenging to get it started. Also, my knife probably needs to be sharpened. Oh, but there it goes. I got it started and yeah, the flush is softened in the microwave so it makes it a lot easier. So what I do is I kind of get it as much as I can and then I go to the other side and then I just meet those two lines like so. And then I flip it over and I try to match up where my cut is on this side now. Let's get this like this. There we go. And then the last side, and then it should break open. All right, so I've successfully cut the squash in half. So we have two nice halves of our squash. And again, if you wanted to skip the microwave, you could, and you could start with this as your starting point. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape out the inside. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of paper towel here to put my innards on. And I'm gonna grab my adaptive fork out of the drawer. And if you've never seen my adaptive fork, this is called a universal cuff. And you can buy them on Amazon for 10 bucks. And it's great if you have arthritis or you don't have a good grip. And I put a fork in there and then I actually duct tape it to keep it from moving. And this fork just always lives in this cuff. So that's how I eat. And I use it for a lot of stuff in the kitchen as well. So I'm going to stabilize the squash with one of my arms and then with the other arm I can scrape out and you just want to get the seeds and some of this stringy stuff you don't want to get the flesh because we're that's what we want to eat so I mainly just focus on the seeds I don't mind the stringy stuff on my spaghetti squash um, and I know some people love to use an ice cream scoop for this part of the process so you might find if you do own an ice cream scoop that it's a lot easier to use that. So I'm just kind of digging down until I no longer see any seeds. Just kind of digging in there. I see a few seeds, just kind of scraping them up and around from all the sides. And then once I get that side done, then I'll just spin the whole thing around. Like so, and then I'll stabilize it on this side and then I'll scrape from the other side just scraping until I no longer see the seeds and then that's how I know I'll be done and if you have a thing about texture you may want to get all the stringy stuff out or if you're like me and you don't really care then you don't have to be quite so anal about it. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I've got most of them up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna flip the whole squash over onto my paper towel here. And so it's starting to come out and they're kind of stuck with some of the stringy stuff. So now I'll just kind of Scrape it right onto the paper towel. 
it's real slimy. got most of the seeds out right there there's a few still stuck so I'm gonna just keep on scraping 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 till I get them all you know spaghetti squash seeds I've sometimes left some in there and they taste pretty good they're not bad they're sort of like pumpkin seeds and Bell's barking in the background because somebody probably just closed their car door three blocks away. And she's letting us know that someone's outside. And we appreciate that. We want to know. We like to know. Thank you, Belle. You're doing a great job being a pup. She does a really good job. <laughs> All right, well, I feel mean, mostly satisfied with the job I've done here. Again, you know, I'm, I've got some stringy stuff in there and, and I'm not mad about it. I'm okay with that. So we'll just, we got some still connected. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy to the side and do the same thing with this other one. So stabilizing it here towel scrape 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 it's very meditative scraping out a spaghetti squash you can just take your time with it I like to just take my time when I'm cooking I like to leave a lot of time I do not like to cook if I'm in a rush then I end up just not doing as good of a job. Because right now, as I'm scraping this squash, I'm also putting my love and my care into it. And that makes a big difference, believe it or not. So if you're an angry cook, then you're putting your anger into your food. But if you're a happy and a mindful cook, then everybody who eats that food will taste your joy and your mindfulness. And it will be extra nourishing for them. And that's really what cooking is about, is about nourishing ourselves and nourishing others. And it's just the best feeling in the world to be able to cook for someone else, to be able to nourish them. So I think we're about done with this one too. This one came up a little bit easier, I think because it was the smaller half, so. There are more seeds in the other one. All right. I'm feeling pretty good about the work I've done here so far. And again, I've got a little stringies, and if you don't like that, you can just scrape to your heart's content, and the more you scrape, the more love you're putting into it. All right, got a little stringy caught on me. So now I'm gonna grab my little glassware and we're gonna start drizzling olive oil and seasoning, okay? So I just got an old glass baking dish here. You can tell it's had a lot of love put into it over the years. It's not pristine. And I've got my olive oil here. And you can really use any kind of oil that you have on hand. And first, I'm just gonna drizzle a tiny bit into the pan itself. Just to kind of protect my little pan here. Just spreading it around. And then I'll just set my two little squash pieces in here. And like I mentioned earlier, this pan is not usually quite big enough for two, and yet it still works. So, oh, I don't know. That might be actually close to perfect. So now I'm going to just drizzle some olive oil right on top. 
And so this next part is where you get to season it. And you can just season it to your heart's desire with whatever you love. I'm gonna just use salt and pepper for today, but you could add garlic powder, you could add a little onion powder, you could add some Italian seasoning or some paprika. Just be creative. Test things out and see what you like. So I'm gonna go over here back to the microwave and grab my spices. I've got some pepper here. I'm just gonna sprinkle on top. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. And then a little bit of salt as well. This is just some fine sea salt. You could use some Himalayan pink salt if you really wanted to get those health benefits. Fresh ground pepper, whatever you want. Okay, so now I'm just gonna slide this in here. And we're gonna roast, this is a small spaghetti squash, so I'm only gonna roast it for about 40, 45 minutes. We'll check on it. And um, if you have a larger spaghetti squash, it could take as long as an hour to cook. Keep an eye on it. Once it gets nice and brown on the top, you'll know it's ready. We'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. All right, so our spaghetti squash has cooled off sufficiently. So I'm gonna grab it. We've got some other stuff cooking now. If that interests you, you can check out my cashew cream sauce video and learn how to make something delicious to put on top of these. But for now, we've got our spaghetti squash. So again, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab my adaptive fork and show you how to scrape this into a nice noodley consistency. All right, so once you've got your spaghetti squash and it's nice and roasted, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a fork or a spoon and you're just gonna scrape it up. It should be nice and tender and it just comes away from the sides really easily. So just go all the way to the size of the gourd and scrape it up. And you can move it around and get all the different sides and just scrape up. You can see how it sort of scrapes up into this noodley consistency that's just perfect for pasta sauces. But you could even use a curry sauce. I mean, you could put any kind of sauce on top of this. And remember, our spaghetti squashes do have little holes in them from where I pierced them to put them in the microwave. If you skipped that step and you don't have holes, then you can just use your little spaghetti squash gourds as like a little boat. It could be its own bowl. But if you have holes, you'll probably wanna scrape it into a different bowl. And yet I wanna kinda contain it within the spaghetti squash just for the ease of scraping it. You can scrape the sides just as much as you want and get all those good little particles. Yum. Yum, yum. Look at all that. All right, so we've got one done pretty much. And when we scrape it into our bowl, we can really get all the bits off the bottom. For now, I'm just getting it for the most part. Awesome. So now we've got two delicious halves of spaghetti squash. This is a perfect dinner for two, and you can top it with whatever sauce you like. I hope you enjoy it. It's delicious. It's nutritious. You're going to be living your healthiest life as your best self. 
with my roasted spaghetti squash. Enjoy.